So I hear life is normally easier being the baby of the family. Like the older siblings have paved the way and the parents are just like tired by the time they have the last one. So they let things slide a little bit more. Now this was not true with the Kennedy family. I mean, from day one, Ted was living in the shadow of his older brothers, but he really wasn't that upset about it, you know? Joe Jr., John, and Bobby essentially gave Ted the cheat code on how to succeed in a family that demanded the kids be perfect. Public image was everything to the Kennedys. I mean, it was, and then all their kids started dying, so that's gotta be shitty. Um, So after graduating from Harvard, like all the boys in the family, Ted became a lawyer and started to make his way in the world. In 1962, he was elected to the Senate where he became a major power player over the years. And all in all, I mean, things were going pretty well. That is, until the Kennedy curse strikes again. In 1964, Ted was in a private airplane, I know, beware, that was traveling from DC to Massachusetts. Bad weather became an issue and during the final approach, The plane crashed in an apple orchard. It was bad. So the plane crashes and the pilot and one of Ted's aides died on impact. Ted's wife, Joan, had survived and so did another senator and his wife who were passengers on the plane. After like they all climbed out, the plane went up in flames. It was very dramatic. Now Ted was still in the plane and they probably assumed that he he was dead. As the senator and the wives are escaping to safety, Ted lets out a whimper. And the senator hears hears his whimper, goes back and pulls Ted from the wreckage, saving his life. Yeah, so very, yes, another plane crash. Is it not weird? It's weird. But after he recovered, Ted rolled up his sleeves and came back to the Senate ready to do work, honey. He had friends in both the Democratic and Republican parties and people just generally really loved the guy. I mean, the guy was energetic, friendly, outgoing, and could make people laugh. So after his brothers were killed, it looked like Ted was next in line to make a run for president. But understandably, Ted was terrified. I mean, sure, he wanted the job, but Time Magazine reported that Ted also had a quote, a doomed feeling about the prospect, end quote. And I mean, Ted himself even addressed the elephant in the room about running for president. He reportedly said, quote, I know that I'm going to get my ass shot off one day and I don't want to, end quote. Fair, fair, yeah. But either way, the summer of 1969 rolls around and Ted's presidential image is gaining some serious heat. It's looking like a sure thing that he's going to be the front runner for the upcoming presidential election. That is until one fateful night, Ted's world came crashing down. Well, he did some stupid shit, okay? Listen, because the day is July 18th, 1969. Ted and a bunch of friends are in Martha's Vineyard. I hear it's real fancy, but it's like an island where rich white people race expensive boats and be rich and stuff and wear like the sweaters tied around their neck. Yeah, and that's exactly why Ted was there. Ted was racing in the Kennedy family's prized sailboat. Because of of course they had one. So later that day, they all went to a different island called Chappaquiddick for a cookout. I know, I wonder what kind of food they eat. Because you know it's not a hot dog. Anyways, but Ted had co-hosted the event for people who worked in his brother's campaign the year before. Almost like it was closure for everyone after the assassination. But here's the thing. The party was thrown specifically for a group of six women who were all single. So these six women were known as the Boiler Room Girls because they had worked in a windowless room in Bobby's election office. It's like, get him some sunlight, goddamn. You got the money, bro. Well, the day party turned into a night party. They were all drinking, a lot, okay? It's around 11, 15 p.m. Ted decides to get behind the wheel of a black Oldsmobile and riding shotgun was one of those boiler room girls. Her name was Mary Jo Kopechny. Now, Mary Jo was described as a smart 28-year-old political staffer who worked on both JFK's and Bobby's campaigns. So yeah, she liked working for the Kennedys. To this day, there's all sorts of speculation as to why Ted and Mary Jo were in the car together. You know, like, mm, were they headed to Bone Town? No one really knows why they were together. 
Okay, I'm sure we can use our imagination, but they were together. But according to Ted, he was saying that Mary Jo had gotten sick and he was taking her to the ferry so she could go back to her hotel and sleep it off. The ferry was the only way to get from the island back to the mainland. So Ted is driving, you know, as one does. So he's, and he's been drinking, he's driving. And then at some point he drove the car off a bridge and it landed upside down in a pond. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Don't drink and drive kids and adults. Stop being idiots. Anyways, so they're upside down in the pond. And even with a head injury, Ted somehow managed to get out of the car. But Mary Jo did not. According to testimony, Ted said he dived down to the car like seven or eight times during a 20 minute period trying to save Mary Jo. But I, I guess he was just never able to get her. So Ted ends up walking back to a cottage at like 12, 15 a.m. where two of his closest friends are. Ted gets to these guys and tells them what happened. And the three of them return and again, like try to get down there and retrieve Mary Jo. The whole time telling Ted that like he needs to call the cops and report what happened. So then it gets, it gets very flipperish again. Instead of like taking the ferry back to the mainland, Ted ends up jumping in the water and swims back to Edgar Town. What's up with these people? <laughs> well, what? You know, like make it make sense. And I guess when he arrives back into town, Ted doesn't report what happened. Mm -mm. Instead, he goes back to the hotel to like change his clothes. And then I guess he just paced in his room until 7 a.m. I don't know, I feel like you could have called the cops, right? Oh, okay. Then at 7.30 a.m. outside the hotel, Ted runs into the guy who won the sailboat race the day before. He's like, yeah, sick sailboat, oh. I guess they just chatted about like boats, yeah. And Ted even said that like, yeah, I might join you for breakfast, I'm down. Hmm? Yeah. So everyone who saw Ted that day said he looked totally normal, like nothing was wrong. You know, like he didn't just drive an Oldsmobile into a pond and kill a woman. So it isn't until 10 a.m. when Ted contacts the local police to tell them about the car wreck. Mary Jo Kopechny's body remained stuck in that car under that murky water for about 10 hours before she was retrieved. Ted, that's fucked up. Boo. So when the Chappaquiddick incident broke in the national news, well, of course, people went nuts. I mean, there were so many questions, like why were they together in the car? Why did the car go off the road? Is there something Ted is hiding? Well, obviously he was hiding the fact that he just like killed someone, you know? There was a whole lot of people who think that Ted didn't call the cops right away because, you know, he was drunk. He didn't want that blood alcohol test. If he were driving drunk, it would be evidence of illegal activity and Ted could get booked for involuntary manslaughter. All the stuff Ted would know because he's a lawyer. And then, okay, so the news comes out, whatever. And then all of a sudden, Ted is spotted publicly wearing a neck brace on multiple occasions. Like nothing else looked injured. He was just wearing a neck brace, you know, for the cameras. It just feels a little photo op -y. Like, hey, Mary Jo just died, but my neck, I'm hurt too, see? My neck, I'm hurt. In a national televised speech the week after Mary Jo's death, Ted claimed he didn't drive drunk and there was no immoral conduct happening. He then blamed his weird actions after the accident on his concussion, shock, and confusion. You know, as to why the car went off the road and into the pond, Ted blamed everything but himself. He was like, the road was unlit, the bridge, it was narrow, and it had the guard, no guardrails, yada, yada, yada. No, 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 just saying words, you know, not telling the truth. Well, actually, the truth is that we will never really know what happened in Chappaquiddick, but I'm sure we can all guess, right? He should have been locked up for that. That's fucked up. But what we know for sure is that this essentially ended any chance of Ted becoming president, which is ironic because all this happened while Apollo 11 was landing on the moon. You know, an event that his brother JFK promised would happen when he was president. Ted eventually pled guilty to leaving the scene of an accident and spent zero time in jail. 
Even though his shot at the presidency was gone, he did continue on in the Senate for another 40 years. Wow. So you can be a murderer and still be in the Senate for 40 years? Wow. And to be fair, I mean, during this time, he did he did some great work. He helped pass some like major laws and stuff, but 